Hi, my name is Krista Conway, and this is my meditation presentation. Um, this is my dog, Patch. Um, he will be demonstrating with us today. Um, so first, you want to assess the patient. Um, a good way to remember this is the term crash plan. Um, so you want to remember to check the airway, cardiovascular, respiratory, abdomen, spine, head, pelvis, limbs, arteries, and veins, and nerves. Um, so after that mentation, um, the definition for that is the mental awareness of the animal. Uh, evaluation is based off the assessment of four spinal functions. Um, the first deficits are conscious proprioception, um, the ability to realize the position of the foot. Um, the second is ataxia. Um, you can test this by knuckling toes or turning the foot over um, and the animal should immediately return the foot back to normal. So for example, if I were to put his foot down, he doesn't even want to let me get close to the couch. If I put it like that, he immediately turns his foot back over. Um, but yeah, um, the next function that is affected is voluntary leg movement um, and signs range from weakness to full paralysis. Um, the third function loss is superficial or skin pain, um, and then this is tested by pinching the toe skin. Um, he should withdraw his foot or vocalize. Um, so I'm not gonna pinch him very hard. I don't wanna hurt his little toe, but if I, I'm not even fully grabbing it and he's pulling it away. He's like, what's he doing? Um, yeah, and then the fourth function is loss of feeling of deep pain. Um, so you would test this by clamping a hemostat to a toe, um, look for signs of them whining or trying to bite, and again, I'm not gonna, the humus jet to his little toes. Um, so for levels of consciousness, um, you can remember this by the terms no dog should order cocoa. Um, and first would be normal, so bright, alert, responsive, quiet, alert, responsive. Um, signs you can look for a wagging tail, bright eyes, if they're vocal, they're barking, they're meowing. Um, dull, um, looks up at movement, responds to noxious stimuli, um, but not outside stimuli. Um, so noxious stimuli examples could be like heat or it could be coldness. Um, next would be stuporous, um, and that's responsive to the noxious stimuli, and they can also be ataxic. Um, and ataxia can have three different signs, so it'd be proprioceptive, they're symmetric, and they just have mild lack of coordination. Um, vestibular, they're asymmetric, so they fall or drift to one of the other sides. Um, cerebular, um, symmetric, no loss of strength in limbs, and they kind of have a bouncy appearance. Um, where was I? Oh, the next one would be obtunded. Um, so almost comatose, um, people's respond to light and minimal response to noxious stimuli. Um, so like, for example, like the heat and cold, they wouldn't respond very well to that. Um, and then the last one, last sign, level of consciousness would be comatose. Um, so there's no palpebral reflex and they're completely unresponsive um, to any of those previous things mentioned. Um, for our cranial nerve assessment, we're gonna do the palpebral reflex um, on patch. So we're gonna go ahead and touch his medial canthus and wait for him to blink. So I'm just gonna use a little pen. So I'm gonna put it right here. I didn't even get all the way. I don't know if you could see, he blinked. Oh, right there. <laughs> So he responded pretty well to that. Um, if it was abnormal, he wouldn't move his head away at all. He wouldn't be blinking. He would just be unresponsive and just let me poke him in the eye with a pen. Um, the next is gonna be the vibrisse re reflex. Um, so I'm gonna touch his upper lip and his lip is either gonna move or he's gonna turn his head. So I can move him to this side again. So I moves his head a little bit, move his head again a little bit. He's like, get away from me move his head again. So that's perfect. And if this was an abnormal response, he wouldn't move his head at all. He wouldn't lift his lip and you can't really see it very well in the video, but he was twitching his whiskers when I put the pen there and you wouldn't see signs of that either. Um, the next is gonna be the auric auricular reflex. Um, so we're gonna test the inner pinna in his ear and I wanna see him twitch his ear, blink, shake his head. Um, so I'm gonna same thing, use the pen again. So I kind of touch his ear a little bit. He moves his head, he's twitching a little bit. He's just looking at me. I think he's enjoying it. He likes ear scratches. <laughs> um, and then next we're gonna go ahead and do our spinal assessment. So I'm gonna move my phone down here so it's easier to see him. Get him on his side. There we go, 
a little bit better. Um, so for first, we're gonna do the tricep reflex. Um, so I wanna hold his elbow out and over the ulna, and I wanna tap the tricep with a tendon hammer. I don't have a tendon hammer, so I'm gonna use the side of my calculator, um, and you should see him twitch his leg a little bit. He is withdrawing his leg a little bit, so that's normal. Um, if he wasn't responsive, he wouldn't withdraw his leg, he wouldn't have any response, and he wouldn't even really notice what I'm doing. Um, next, we're going to do a thoracic withdrawal reflex. Um, so I want to watch the flex and flex him. Uh, I want to watch him flex all his joints. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and pull his arm out, and he's going to withdraw a little bit. Again, his arm again withdraw and withdraw so that's normal um abnormal signs would be he wouldn't be withdrawing his leg at all and he wouldn't even really notice can't really see his face but he's just chilling <laughs> all right Oops. next we're going to talk about transporting um, so when you're transporting a smaller animal with a head injury, um, you want to make sure you wrap the animal in a large towel or a blanket. Um, you can even do a burrito wrap to hold the patient still if they're moving a lot. Um, if it's just the spinal, if it's just a spinal injury, you're going to want to pick up under the armpits with legs facing away from you. So the bottom of his body dangles and that's just to avoid any spinal compression. So just like this. Um, large animals, you would place them on a flat surface search, um, or for a spinal cord um, fracture in a large animal, you would place them on a flat surface such as a board, a surfboard, a door, um, a boogie board, and then you would either tape them or tie them to the board to hold them flat. Um, since he's a smaller guy, you can just hold him the first method that I showed you guys. Um, if he was a bigger dog, you'd want him on his side, um, and you would have two people carry him rather than just one person. Uh, when caring for a paralyzed patient, you want to keep the animal clean. That's very important. Um, you want to keep them in a well-padded, confined area, such as a crate or a kennel. Um, if the animal is not moving, rotate the body position every three to four hours. This is done to prevent bed sores. It's also done to prevent ulcers, and it also encourages movement from the animal a little bit, too. Um, if they're lying down an extended period of time, they are going to start getting bed sores and ulcers, which can progress to even worse problems. Um, orthopedic bedding, really soft bedding, can help prevent these problems. Um, urination and defecation will not likely be um, controlled voluntarily. Um, so using potty pads or an absorbent diaper, um, even using like a disposable diaper and using some sort of like maxi pad inside to help absorb will help keep them clean. Um, the area should always be clean and dry. Um, urine and fecal material can lead to skin irritation, it can lead to rash, it can also lead to bed sores and even infections. Um, feces residue can attract insects too, which can be another problem. Um, if there's no motility in the animal, you do want to hand feed them and use a water bottle. Um, like a hamster water bottle might be helpful. Um, if you're feeding them wet food, you can even add water to that to keep it hydrated and add more hydration to their body. Um, it's very important to keep these animals at a healthy weight. Um, if they're overweight, they're going to be too heavy to carry. They're not going to want to walk around. Um, and then if they're underweight, they're going to be too weak where they can't even carry themselves, even though they are lighter. Um, paralyzed animals benefit from a mobility cart or a towel walking. Um, you can use a towel, a sling, or harness, and you want to use this for animals who have some motor function. Um, so hold the towel, sling, or harness yourself, um, and this reduces the weight and helps move the weakened limbs. So I would have a towel wrapped around him, hold the towel above him if he was paralyzed, and help him move, but he's not paralyzed. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, some super, super tech skills um, include having compassion, just being understanding. Um, it's really hard to get caught up um, with this field um, just because there's a lot of things that can be stressful, um, things that are irritating or just things that are frustrating. Um, taking these out on clients or animals is not a good way to get that out. Um, also too, working with animals, they, whatever energy you have, they're going to get that energy too. So if you're really negative, they're going to be a little bit negative too. They're going to be more frightful. They're going to be more afraid. Um, the more positive and the more careful and friendly and just 
play nice you are, the easier the animal will relax. Um, not everyone has these skills, so it is very important to make sure you do um, have these skills. Um, just try to be compassionate, try to put yourself in the owner's shoes, um, try to just be really patient and really kind with the animals too. Um, and yeah, that's my presentation. Um, one last thing I did want to say, um, I remember you said that if he is a bad boy, we minus points, but if he is a good boy, I was just wondering if he gets points. So he wanted to perform a couple tricks. Sit. Down. Roll over. Yes. Oh, boy. Sit. Yeah, I can't do tricks. And the last one, this is my favorite one. Pops, come here. Down. Wait. Wait, 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 Patch. Okay, good boy. Thank you.